Hi, and welcome back to my shop. In the last episode, I finished thicknessing and dimensioning my live edge walnut top for my hall table project. Now that I know the essential dimensions of the top, I can shift my attention over to designing and building the carcass. All I have to do is flip my board over and I see the exact canvas that I have to work with. Because this is such a unique top, I want to do something that will complement but not distract from the beauty of the walnut. So I have a few things in mind and I'm going to start with the legs. I started playing around with a few different sketches on how I want the legs to work. Again, this is a pretty unique piece, so I really don't want to adhere to any traditional or standard leg design that would sort of look out of place with, you know, a live edge top. So my thought was to do sort of a gentle curve on the leg, and unlike a cabriole leg, this will only curve in one dimension. If you look at it from the other view, it will simply just taper, but there won't be a curve. So that'll sort of give some complement to the curves of the top, but it's not going to be overly ostentatious like a traditional cabriole leg. The other unique thing I want to do is instead of having the legs meet the aprons squarely, I'm actually going to have them come in at an angle that matches that curve. So that'll add a little bit of complexity to the project, but I think it'll really make it unique and it'll make it stand out. Before I can actually start picking out any lumber, I need to build my leg pattern that I'm going to use to machine all of the legs. Um, this is really a little bit of an organic process. I don't like to use SketchUp to design legs other than to get a general sense for what they might look like. Um, I think there's really no substitute for, for pen and pencil and an actual pattern. I have a couple of things here that I'm going to use as tools. Obviously, I need my, my general idea. Um, I also have a piece of quarter inch MDF that's cut to exactly 30 inches long. So this is the exact height that I need my legs to be. And then I also have a couple different thicknesses of uh, cherry, which is sort of uh, just some stock I had laying around the shop. And they're two different thicknesses because they will bend uh, to different radii. And then I also have um, an adjustable curve here. So between those things and a couple of squares, I should be able to come up with a, a pretty nice looking leg template. First thing I need to do is I know I need a flat area here to accept the apron of the table, probably a little bit easier to see here. And I want to go with six inch aprons. Um, I think that's a, a wide enough apron that it will sort of balance out the thickness of the top, but it's not too thick. This doesn't have uh, front drawers or anything that I need to house. So my first step is to have, just get my combo square here, set it six inches and then mark that and then just square it off and I know that's where I need my flat area to remain. My next step, um, I've clamped down the end of one of these flexible pieces of cherry and I have a couple decisions I can make here. I can either have the, the tip of the top of the leg and the tip of the bottom of the leg completely in the same plane, or I could have the legs stick out more or less. So I'm gonna play around with that a little bit, but I think in general, I want them roughly to fall along the same plane. In, in all of my diagrams, that's, that's essentially how it works. In this one, I think the, the leg actually might extend just slightly. No, nope, it's pretty much in plane. So I can play around with this curve. I've got one end of it clamped down and then I can clamp the other end down and then I can actually play around with it a little bit um, once it's clamped down by adjusting, you know, where it bows out more. So that gives me a lot of flexibility. And then if I want to fine tune it, I can then move over to my flexible curve. So I'm kind of liking this shape here. I've actually got the bottom um, will be just shy of completely flush with the point in the top. So I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm using pencil here because again, I can fine tune this. This is just getting me a good fair curve to start with. I'm not sure if you can actually see my pencil line on here, but 
This is basically the inside, or actually it'd be the outside edge of the leg, the inside curve. And I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think I need to do a whole lot of fine tuning there. So then I'll just need to lay out the mating curve for the other side. Now when you're doing a cabriole leg, you usually need to take the, the thickness of your stock into account because you can't have the leg wider than the stock is thick because you're going to have that same profile on both dimensions. In this case, because it's not a cabriole leg, it's going to be curved in one dimension and just tapered in the other dimension, I can go as wide or as narrow as I want here. So I have a lot of flexibility. So again, I'm gonna just kind of play around with a couple of different shapes here. I do know I want this thing to taper from top to bottom, but beyond that, the sky's the limit here of what I wanna do. Now, because this thing does have a fairly thick, substantial top, I think it needs to have you know, some weight to the legs. So I've kind of chosen two and a half inches as the starting width for the top. Could even potentially go three inches in my diagram here, um, if that were really a six inch tape uh, apron, then the width of my legs is probably almost four inches. So I, I need to play around with that a little bit, um, but I do need it to taper down to probably about an inch or so at the bottom is really my only constraint. And once again, I can kind of play around with this curve a little bit until I get it into a shape that I really like. I've got my leg shape now where I really like it. I had to keep kind of bringing the inside curve in to get more of a pronounced uh, taper there towards the bottom. But I'm pretty happy with the shape there. Now the other thing I need to take into account here is that as of now, this is still a little bit of a curve at the top here. And this is the area where my apron is actually gonna come in and meet. So that actually needs to be a straight line. So I'm gonna leave my mark at the top and as well as my intersection where the apron area needs to start. And then I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to find the angle that will connect those dots with my protractor here, or adjustable square. Lock that in, and turns out that that is almost a perfect five degree angle. So it's subtle enough where it's not going to look odd, but it's pronounced enough where you'll notice that it isn't a perfect square where the apron meets the, the leg. So once I draw this line, hopefully it will blend enough with that curve that it won't really look pronounced at that intersection. And it really doesn't. I mean, to the, to the naked eye without lining that up, it, it almost gives the illusion that that curve is just continuing even though that's a straight line there. Now the outside, I really don't need to, st to straighten out um, because I can essentially have any shape there I want because there's, there's nothing joining on the outside. So that's basically the shape of my leg right there. What I'll do next is go cut this out on the bandsaw, clean it up with the drum sander, and then that'll be my last opportunity where I can really fine tune. I'll usually sight down it and uh, you know, fine tune the shape once I have it you know, actually on a piece of MDF. Here you can see the final leg template. I'm over in my dimensioning room now and I'm looking through my wood pile to see what I might be able to use for the base of this project. I don't necessarily want to make the entire thing walnut, but I don't want to detract from that walnut live slab top as the focal point of the piece. So looking through my materials here, I've got some blood wood. Um, don't have enough to make the legs out of, but that really wouldn't work well because that would definitely detract from the walnut. I have some, actually some first growth mahogany here. 
I'm gonna save that for something else, not good material for legs. I have a nice big piece of ash, but I'm saving that for another special project because I need something really, really thick. Also got some maple and some other pieces of, of ash. I have some wet ash that I'm gonna use for some steam bending down the road. Um, I also have some really nice, uh, wide, thick pieces of cherry. And I've always thought cherry uh, complements walnut really nicely. It's a darker wood, especially after it tans, um, but it won't compete with the walnut. And because I have some really nice long pieces here, I'm betting I can find some good areas of rifts on grain that will work really well for legs. So I'm gonna pull some of these big boys out of here, sort through them and see if I can uh, find a place where I could source my legs from. I've gone ahead and selected a big long stick of cherry. And the reason I chose this particular piece is that it had minimal sapwood on the ends or the edges of the board, which is really where I like to get my legs from because you get more rifts on grain. But also, you can see here it has this sort of swirl pattern in the middle here. And that actually repeats itself three times down the length of this board. And the reason I really like that is if I take my template and I lay it down right outside that swirl, it almost perfectly matches, the grain almost perfectly matches the curve of my leg. And because that swirl happens to be in the middle of the board, I can actually then flip this over and I'll be able to source another leg out of the other side of that swirl. So with just two sections of this board, I'll be able to source all four of my legs and I'll have some left over that I could potentially use for my aprons. So what I'll do here is I'll just make a chalk line just past where I want to source this material from. I guess I really don't need the square to do that. So I'm leaving a little bit of extra material on both ends for any snipe or any um, potential checks on the board. So I'll be able to get two out of this and then I'll just move my board down and repeat the same process. Here we've got all four legs now um, cut out of the, the, the blanks. So I did leave each of the, the legs long. I didn't do the cross cut on the bandsaw. I'll do that at the end using my miter saw. Um, and I also just kept everything assembled because a lot of times when you do your final shaping, it can be really handy to be able to um, tape your cutoffs back on. So probably when I do the, the taper cuts, at the end, it'll be really handy to have those cutoffs, so I'm keeping those around. To clean up the bandsaw edges, I'm actually just going to template route using the template itself and bringing it over to the router table, I'll be able to get it perfectly matched up to the, the edges of my pattern. So I'm just going to take a little bit of double stick tape, and I don't want to use too much here because it can be very difficult to remove the template afterwards if you use too much. So I'm using just thin strips that'll keep it nice and secure. And then carefully just place my template on where my pencil marks are. And over at my router table, I have a flush cut bit and basically the bearing is on the bottom. And this is one of my bigger bits. I, I like for a, a gentle curve like this to use a bigger diameter bit if I can. I also have a pin into the router plate and that'll just give me a leverage point for you know, leveraging the, the board into the, the spinning blade. Um, this isn't gonna be tall enough to get all the way through the full width of the leg. So when I'm done, I'll switch over to a top bearing bit and flip the, each of the legs over and remove the about you know quarter to half inch remaining material.
now that I've got these shaped, I can come over to my miter saw and I've just got my five degree angle set up and I can just cut off. All right, so now that I have the rough shapes done, I still need to taper my legs in this dimension. I basically want to end up with roughly a square on the bottom of the leg. Right now it's still a rectangle. So what I did is I created another template, this time out of wacky wood or bending ply. And it basically has the gentle taper already uh, scribed in it. And one thing that I was careful to do is that this line here marks the six inch point from the uh, the top of the template. And that's basically where I don't want to have any taper cut on my, on my board. So I also marked the same line here so that when I'm cutting, I don't ever accidentally go past that because I need that to be nice and flat. So all I have to do is lay this out. It's the same length as the pieces of wood. And I also have scribed a center mark in the bottom that matches a center mark on my blank. So I can just line those up, square up the top, and then mark my line. It's a really easy way of marking a straight line on a curved surface. Now the other thing I need to do, because I do need to send this through uh, my bandsaw again, I need a flat bottom surface, so I'm just going to double stick tape the blank into that cutoff and that'll give me a nice flat surface to use as a reference point. Here are the final legs. They uh, are sort of tusk shaped. Maybe I'll call this my Tuscan table. Boom. Anyway, uh, the rough shape is done. I still need to smooth them out a little bit, so I'll probably hit this with my spoke shave and a little sandpaper once I get uh, closer to actually assembling. But the legs are done, and now that I know the dimensions of the top of the leg, that will then let me uh, then lay out the rest of the carcass, which will be my next step.